than the, the speaker today, uh, Professor Jada Tumar. Uh, she's going to talk us about the science uh, grafting for excellent reconstruction of contemporary science and their clinical applications. Dear colleagues and dear First of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee. The special thanks to Sherry Gonzalez for inviting me to this distinguished conference. Uh, I'm honored to be here, and today my topic is misgrafting for nitrogen construction. I'm coming from Istanbul and waiting from beautiful Istanbul to you. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. I'm from Istanbul, and I graduated from Istanbul University, and I did my PhD at the same university, and during my PhD period, I was discovered for IDI, and now I'm a full-time professor at the University. As we know, the maxillary science provides a challenge for implant dentistry because of the reduced wall volume, which is due to algebra wall loss, the following two drops, and the fluorization of the sinus cavity. And most of the times, implants cannot be placed easily into the sinus area. So because of these reasons, several ways to avoid sinus cavity is to elevate sinus, use a zygomate plant, Tangulated or tilted implants, and also now we are using short implants. And also, shorten the dental arch with premolar occlusion is also another the way to avoid the sinus cavity. However, some cases have such nice ideal crest height and also the width, but these are very uh, rare. Low bone quality in the posterior maxilla can lead to presence and fluidization of the maxillary sinuses and reduction of the height and width of the alveolar crest, leading to bone deficiencies. It has been reported that in order to achieve a clinical success like natural cleaning, the implant support in this region should be greater than the other ones, especially if the long and the large diameter implants should be placed in this region. To avoid this, we use vertical the deficiencies of your horizontal yeah, bone deficiencies of your and Okay. Combined bone deficiencies can be cured. Various techniques are used for the vertical bone deficiencies. If we need one or two millimeter, we use uh, internal science evaluations. If we, need, uh, uh, if we have big vertical bone deficiencies, we use lepotone osteotomy and interpositional bone grafting. Depending on the size of the horizontal bone loss in the mandible, various techniques are also used, such as split quest osteotomy or distraction of epigenesis or the alveolar bone graphic procedures. Today we will focus on sinus fluor elevation, especially internal sinus fluor elevation and external sinus fluor elevations. For a clinician to master this surgical approach, he or she requires a thorough anatomy, the physiology, and pathology of the sinus. The maxillary sinus is pyramidal in shape. The base of the pyramid is the medial wall of the sinus. That's also the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. And its apex is pointed toward the zygomatic bone. And the average volume is 15 millimeters. And septa may divide into the entire sinus into two or more compartments uh, separately. The majority of the septa are located between the second three molar and first molar feet. When the membrane is to be erased, we have to be very careful. Sometimes we have to open two cavities. Uh, if there is a full portion of the sinus by septum, more than one letter window has to be uh, opened. Also, the membrane that lines the walls of the uh, maxillary sinus is called Schneiderian membrane. The layer it has multi layers. And the layers include the respiratory epithelium. Here you see this. So this is the five columnar epithelia. The health maxillary sinus. maintained by postural drainage and actions of the rich uh, proposed the bacteria towards the osteum. And then on the medium wall, uh, we have an osteum, here you see, 
the osteoclastal phase drainage of the sinus into the middle nerves of the nasal cavity, and the average distance between uh, between this place and this uh, floor of the uh, second floor of the sinus is approximately 28.5 millimeters. So the sinus should be should not be filled uh, beyond 15 millimeters from the antral floor, uh, preclude the possibilities of uh, blocking the os blocking the osteum and causing sinuses. The blood supply of the maxillary sinus anatomy is uh, maxillary artery, inferior artery, posterior alveolar posterior artery, and on the anastomosal wood, the inferior artery and posterior alveolar superior nerve. And also anterior, middle, and posterior superior alveolar nerve and greater palatal nerve, the nerve is the sinus. And when we look at the functions of the sinus, reduce the skull weight, in part because of the voice, communication and learning of inspired air, absorption of shots to the head, and provides infection drainage. The placement of implants in the posterior area is most commonly compromised or sometimes impossible. Therefore, vertical reach augmentation is often necessary before or in conjunction with placement of implants. Very surgical approach compromising elevation of the Schneiderian membrane can be proposed uh, to in order to achieve the necessary vertical aid for the placement of implants. What are the indications of the uh, sinusal elevation? At least one missing teeth at posterior maxilla, residual alveolar crest height less than six millimeter, uh, the absence of any pathology in the sinus area, the absence of major uh, sinus disease, and there should be no obstacles in this part. And what factors, what factors affect the uh, sinus correlation? Especially the general health studies is very important for us. Uh, factors influencing systemic bone health, healing and teaching therapy with intra or post-operative complications should be real. Especially regulatory patients to the head and neck, diabetic patients with uncontrolled ones, and also patients with transplanted organs in the specific patients, and also neuropsychiatric disorders may compromise compliance, and because of this reason, we have to be careful with these patients. And also a complete list of medications should be available at the preoperative site. Medication that might influence the uh, course of the science evaluation procedure should be evaluated, especially antitrombic agents, prophylactic -like antibiotics, local anesthesia, painkillers, and special attention has to be requested uh, to be in the of and immunosuppressive agents uh, used in patients, special attention has to be taken. And also allergies is important. Allergies towards material use during science evaluation is very rare, but attention should be paid to uh, possible allergies towards uh, prophylactic antibiotics, uh, local anesthesia, painkillers, and as well as also malphysis. Tobacco increases the risk of pneumonia and pneumonitis. However, tobacco is not a well, is not an absolute contraindication, but elevates the risk of complication, especially the uh, perforation of the membranes. Potential uh, signs of elevation candidates should be informed about elevated risk of complications and motivated to quit smoking. And uh, alcohol is also increase the risk of complications. The main problem with the alcohol is uh, probably an accompanying compromised health and also malnutrition and uh, compromised compliance. And compliance is also important in this patients and should be related carefully, uh, preoperatively, and uh, patient based. Science correlations uh, is the highest in chronic paralysis patients and other and also smoking, inflammatory colic, bone density, drug season, unfavorable interactualizations are moderate risk, and full dose radiotherapy and IV administration of glucosamines are absolute contraindications for science and work evaluations. When we are planning surgically, the important thing is planning with radiotherapy evaluation and clinical evaluation, careful and appropriate selection of patients based on well-defined clinical indications to the long-term success of implants. 
proper key selection is important to radiographic and clinical evaluation. And in addition to general requirements, we have to check the sinus morphology, anatomy, physiology, and all over the sinus separately. And which morphology and interact relation is also very important. And where we uh, planning the uh, sur uh, surgical implant and sinus for evaluation, we have to use uh, especially computer tomographies. Uh, for detailed examination and for uh, success. And then the treatment is developed uh, based on the best clinical evidence. When we look at the random examination, we have to check residue of bone height and weight, anatomy of the maxillary sinus, sign of disease in the maxillary area, and apical and marginal sets of remaining that tissue. And radiographic examination techniques use enteral radiographs showing peri-implant bone conditions, panoramic radiographs uh, showing remaining dentition, and CBCT uh, including linear measurements of remaining bone height and with anti And all these techniques have advantages and disadvantages uh, compared with each other. And intraoral radiograph is commonly used to verify the outcome of implants and for long-term monitoring. And CBCT has shown to have sufficient accuracy in planning especially in the critical uh, cases. And with se uh, carefully selected equipment, we have to plan uh, with radiographically. And also, remaining dentition should be evaluated in terms of periodontal disease. Interact relationship spaces should be recorded and to analyze the real space for implant supported clinical diseases. Uh, size of processing is also important, although the evidence for the relationship between implant failure and the work system is lacking, but we have to be careful with the work system patients. And also, 3D unimaginable bone resorption uh, may dictate uh, ejective augmentation procedure, and in this case, diagnostic backstop is mandatory. And now we decide science correlation and which technique we will use. Here, the critical uh, thing is a uh, residual bone height. Also, local intramony uh, anatomy and the number of the teeth to be replaced is important. But the most important thing is the residual bone height. And if the residual bone height is between 5 to 7 millimeter, the uh, internal sinus variation is indicated. And when the, the sinus residual bone height is less than 5 millimeter, uh, we use the external sinus floor elevation procedure. And the key point is the residual, residual bone height. Treatment options related to the classification of, of the atrophic posterior maxilla. This is according to the ITI treatment guide, volume 5, by Katsuyama and Nielsen. They classify group from group 1 to group 4, and these are the clinical characteristics of group 1. These are more in the simple cases, such as insufficient sub one monthly, and acute width of alveolar reach, and these are more complicated cases. In this simple cases, just science for elevation procedure with mass bone substitute and or origin is bone from internal donor side. And in group four, in severe cases, insufficient subcontrol bone height, unfavorable interact relations to the advanced horizontal and vertical breast absorption. In this case, we use a uh, science for elevation procedure and horizontal and vertical regional augmentation with autogenous blood graft may be combined with bone substitute material and reserve root membranes. And uh, which materials and information we are using, rotary instruments, hand instruments, and grafting materials are used. To ensure low trauma surgery, this is very important, all hand instruments should be well kept and drill should be charged. And here we require rotary instruments to prepare the implant bed and lateral window, round doors, and lighting doors we are using. Also, we are using piezoelectric surgery. And piezoelectric surgery is also used to uh, prepare the uh, we know, and it may reduce the risk of membrane perforation during the preparation of lateral window, but uh, it doesn't reduce the risk of membrane perforation during the elevation procedure. These instruments are also used to elevate the sinus membrane and place the grafting material. The small ones used for the liberation of the membrane, and the larger ones uh, expansion of the created space. These instruments are used for internal slides to elevation, osteotomes matching the selected implant system with a concoctive for a fracture of the sinus cord and the convexive for the grafting material. First of all, I would like to talk about the internal slides to elevation. This 
technique is called those close technique, summer technique, or the autumn technique, and transpectal approach. Uh, at least six millimeter bone is uh, needed for implant, and again, the uh, bone height is three to four millimeters in this technique. And here you see the uh, half of the body uh, diagrams. Uh, some is using a osteotrop, tapered osteotrop with increasing diameters, intended to increase the density of soft, increase the soft mode, and uh, upright of the maxillary sinus. Mid crystal incision is made, and then uh, marked with a burst uh, where the implant will be placed. Uh, and that the implant is prepared with a series of osteotomes and increasing the diameter or in combination with burst. So approximately one to two millimeters uh, away from the muscle of the science floor, this is the bottom. An operator of the science floor is made with melt under light tapping with the Schneider membrane. Membrane is elevated by introducing, introducing the reactive material using an acetone with a convex thing. You don't have to use grafting material, you can do this operation without using grafting materials, and here you see the implant is in place. You can place implants without grafting materials. Here you see the radiographic internal signs for elevation. Here you see the implant is in place. A systematic review concluded that implant store widening is dramatically reduced after transparent for science for elevation procedure if the initial bone height was less than 5 mm. So the initial bone height is very important when we are doing the science for elevation. And again, very systematic reviews and meta analysis have assessed implant survival after uh, internal science for elevation and simultaneous implant placement uh, with the use of graph material or without graph material, and overall implant survival is more than 90%. An unpublished uh, systematic review and meta analysis disclosed that no statistical difference in short term implant survival rates. They between osteotop mediated science correlation and simultaneous implant uh, placement uh, with or without use of graphic material. So uh, doing with or without graphic is very important. And it's, miscom uh, it's common misconception that less trained surgeons should prefer internal science correlation. This is misconception. Uh, surgeons need to master the lateral window technique even if they conduct the internal science correlation. Internal science evaluation is a predictable and reliable approach uh, for the rehabilitation of the atrophic posterior maxilla with high implant survival. And however, there is a positive of long term studies and installation of short implants significantly diminishes implant survival rate. And this way, internal science evaluation is usually indicated when there is a of adverse survival of height of more than 6 millimeters present. And indigenous bone graft or mass stop substitutes can be added. If more interface volume is needed, uh, we desire to link. The second technique is external science lifting. This is more complicated to compare to internal science lifting. And we call lateral window technique, lateral science lifting, how to look at the global arthroscopy. This technique is uh, first developed by Tatum in the mid-70s, and this social is still the most frequently used technique uh, for the vertical angle of one height of the anterior posterior part of the maxilla before or in conjunction of the implant placement. And the maxillary size exposed to the oral mucosa uh, in the region of the posterior maxilla area. Mid-crystal incision is made uh, with posterior and anterior vertical release, uh, releasing incisions, as you see here. And uh, the trap door is opened on the lateral wall of the uh, maxillary sinus with burst, or sometimes it can be used as a surgery. Avoiding the lacerization of the Schneider in memory. And here you see that the trapdoor is in fracture and the Schneider membrane is carefully accepted. And here you see the equipment. And you see external self-regulation with simultaneous implant placement. Implants are placed and graft materials are uh, grafted, placed. And then the uh, implant is successfully prepared with burst. And the graph material is densely packed, and the reservoir collagen membrane is placed over the graphs, and the bucaparis are readapted 
and tutored, and uh, the prosthetic uh, part is performed three to six months after implant installation according to primary study. And here we see the regularly view before and after the science evaluation. And stage study and external science evaluation is also possible. Here you see the regularly appearance here, and the trap door is open, and again science is elevated. But in this part, the residual height is not enough to prepare implant placement, so we just put the graphic material and reserve the membrane, but sorry for this, and restructure again. And implants are placed 8 to 12 months after the science evaluation, depending on the graphic material. And science polarization is a predictable and safe approach with a high implant survival rate. When is indicated when there is a new one, height of less than 5 meters is present. And then the implants are inserted simultaneously with the augmentation procedure if the height of the residual wall provides sufficient primary implant If we cannot provide sufficient implant stability, we need uh, not use the implants, we may stay surgery. If not, uh, we place 4 to 12 months after the augmentation procedure, again, depending on the use graphic material. Of course, complications may occur during these procedures, intraoperatively and postoperatively. Uh, early postoperative complications uh, occur within 7 to 10 days, and late postoperative complications occur after 10 days. The most common uh, intraoperative complication during lateral implant technique is science membrane incorporation, temporism, poor primary implant stability, uh, transcriptive science elevation is also a complications, and science membrane perforation is also the same for this technique. And most uh, frequent membrane perforations may not be detected intraoperatively, so we have to be very careful during the section and elevation of the Schneiderian membrane. And presence of septa and residual bone height less than 4 mm increases the risk of science uh, perforation, so we have to be careful. We have to check the radiography uh, correctly, especially we have to use CBCP for uh, the data science uh, before planning. And minor perforations uh, does not reduce implant survival, but large perforations bigger than 10 mm uh, may reduce the implant survival. Risk factors for membrane perforations, since membrane thickness, smoking, residual bone height less than 4 mm, operator experience, presence of septa, and gingival phenotype and lateral bone thickness is also important. Membrane uh, preparations should be close to avoid the uh, migration of graphic material. If accused during internal science evaluation, we have to switch to the lateral inner technique to close the preparation. So uh, internal science evaluation is easier uh, technique, but we have to know window technique to close preparations when uh, it occurs. Here you see the closement of the Schneider perforation. Here you see the elevated uh, Schneiderian membrane, we, uh, where the label membrane is placed to repair the perforation. And here you see the in situ reserve membrane in place to repair, and graphing material is added. And here you see the radiographic appearance. And implants can place three to eight six months after the uh, of course, we can have other uh, complications such as bleeding. Bleeding may disturb intraoperative overview and placement of graphing material, and several bleeding is usually caused by damage to the posterior superior alveolar artery. Uh, the treatment for this is compression or electrocoagulation is recommended in case of bleeding cases. And another complication is displacement of implant low primary stability. Here you see the implants are in science stability due to low primary implant stability. Every operative CDCD is recommended to evaluate the need for a two stage or one stage uh, science evaluation to reduce the risk of uh, implant displacement. A uh, displaced implant should be uh, removed to avoid current science use cases. And another complication, uh, bleeding from incision line, nasal bleeding, one disease, the essence of infection, hematome, adenine, and prosthesia. Uh, significant swelling hematome, the foundation you check under the eye can occur. 
toy is smelling, uh, we can use uh, sprays or non pregnant inflammatory drugs. Uh, patients with such conditions should be checked carefully and monitored postoperatively. Postoperative uh, infections such as size or risk are great, but it can be occurred uh, in two percent of the cases. The use of appropriate antibiotics, non pregnant inflammatory drugs, uh, is important to prevent infections after surgery. And bleeding from a fusion line may be compressed or raised future. Nasal bleeding can occur usual self-limiting within three phase, but we have to uh, inform, uh, inform our patients. And also infection can occur to prevent infection, we use system antibiotics if we may combine the surgical drainage. And also the hematoma resolves continuously, but the major ones have to be uh, used with antibiotic prophylaxis and also uh, checked carefully and monitored carefully. And also one the essence may occur, minor ones and major ones. Minor ones need to be left of your by secondary intention, and the major ones need surgical remission. Uh, and also when that resolves continuously, but we have to inform the patients, and also for the easy and acute, and again it resolves continuously. Uh, we have to know that smokers are generally exhibited greater chances for complications, and we will probably systematically uh, review this concluded that smoking seems to be associated with increased risk of lung diseases and infection after muscular science for patients. So we have to be careful with the smoking patients. And post-operative plate complications for the lateral window implant loss and for the uh, internal lifting techniques of the implant loss. Here you see the failing implants uh, science graph after after the science evaluation, we, we have implant loss, micro size, other or chronic, partial or total loss of breath, and pain, sometimes temporary, sometimes chronic, we can uh, have post-operative complications like this. If the implant mobility is observed, it can occur. Uh, at the end of the healing period, it may be considered to extend the healing period. Or uh, most of the implants have to be removed. Possible causing factors should be eliminated, but uh, re-implantation should be postponed after three months and after the resolution of the infection. Signs this can occur, both acute and chronic. If the uh, acute occur, we use antibiotics and surgical drainage. And in the case of chronic scientists, antibiotics with endoscopically assisted cleansing of the affected signs is recommended. And it may be indicated to perform partial or complete the removal of the graft and regrafting after a healing period of at least three to six months. In a recent meta analysis, the weighted incidence of science membrane perforation was found to be 23.5, in other words, every fourth into five significant procedures. And again, several studies have identified the presence of septa to be an important factor for the preparations. Some others did not find this relationship. It was also found that risk of perforations uh, includes four times in septated sciences uh, compared to non septated sciences. Four times before. And the antigenous ones are also considered as a gold standard for the osteoconductive, osteoinductive, and osteogenic property. However, uh, they may lead to donor site problems. Uh, Xenographs are also used as a reliable uh, material for size lifting procedures, and the addition of uh, growth factors uh, into these graphing materials has been a priority. Uh, fibrin, platelet-rich fibrin is an other fibrin matrix that stores reservable membrane uh, that contains various graphing for the factors to promote bone healing, and uh, the antigenous bone and the wine bone mixture represent a superior regeneration potential that pure membrane graphing Science. More studies are needed uh, for this platelet-rich membrane uh, evaluations. And recent systematic studies show that PRP, PRP was shown to improve soft tissue generation and limit dimensional case post decreasing size, but with little available data to support the GVR, the origination of bone defects. And this is a more study with this focus uh, at point. Science for elevation is a well-documented treatment 
many views to refer to examination and planning is very, very precise. A science for innovation is to aspire complex in cycle state, classification according to the IDI guides, and science for innovation using the larger window technique allows the surgeon to handle all other situations caused by this organization. And using science for innovation using the transcript technique is indicated in selected situation, and the surgeon must be able to identify and handle most complications related to science for innovation elevation procedures. And the overall survival rate for implant placement in reactive macular size is 91.5, with similar rates for combined pathogenous bond with bone substitute 94.9, and bone substitute around 96, and in spontaneous procedure 92.2, and the late procedure 92.9. Overall, more than 9% implant survival is uh, gained with simultaneous or science correlation procedure. When we summarize our lecture, the residual implant bone, the residual bone height is very important. If we have preferred the residual bone height bigger than 5 mm, size for elevation with internal technique is suggested in simultaneous placement of implants. And with graph material, we can use a bone substitute or not, and no second surgery, and three months after surgery, prosthetic procedure is in place. But when we have residual bone height, three to six millimeters, then external science for which is suggested. With simultaneous of implants, we can use graph material, autograph alone, autogra the, if we use autograph, then no state second state state surgery, three to four months after surgery. We can use photograph and no substitute or bone substitute alone. Again, no second surgeries, and the prosthetic procedure is three to four months after surgery. And if the pre-participation of the residual bone height is less than 3 mm, we use external science violation procedures, but state implant placements, and graph depend on the graphing material. If you use photograph alone, six months after surgery one, and the prosthetic part is three months after surgery two. But if we use autograph with bone substitute, six to eight months after surgery one, and the prosthetic part is three months after the surgery two. And if we use bone substitute alone, we have to wait more for the second surgery, nine to 12 months after surgery one, and the prosthetic procedure is three months after surgery two. So, so thank you for your attention. This is my colleagues from the University. I would like to thank all of them, especially my PhD student. He also graduated from al Azhar University from Egypt, and he organized uh, most of the things for this uh, presentation and for this group. Thank you for him. And thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor, uh, for this nice presentation. And we can take a uh, question or two if anybody wants a question. Okay. Uh, my side, yeah, firstly, 
I wait if the resolution of the infection occurs, and I leave it and the control, but it's very big and very uh, huge, so we have to take off the graph material and as well as also the implants. The thing is you will wait. Yeah, at least three to four months, at least, we have to wait. But some literature says we have to wait six months for the resolution of the infection. And when you decide to remove any plant at the bed, or you will not remove it? Yeah, it's, uh, you can see the drainage, and you can see the fuel. Yeah, if you see that fuel is done, and everything is clear, you can understand from the infection signs. If the infection signs uh, remove, then you can... Thank you very much. Okay, well, Thank you very much. And you will please come accept this uh, certificate for appreciation of the committee.